Auto Alarm Specialist. Yeah, this is a 1966 Core Vail. Uh, we installed the alarm system. Uh, we gave it the Excalibur 1670 with the linker unit. Basically, we wanted to have a notification if the alarm fires off. I'm gonna go ahead and show you. When you hit lock the app, it locks your doors. I mean, I'm sorry, it doesn't. This thing doesn't have power locks. It arms the alarm. It tells you that the doors are locked, but he doesn't have door locks. And then he's a convertible, so I don't think he's gonna be locking the door anyway. They're gonna cut your top. Disarm it. You're gonna hit unlock. Okay. It does have GPS, but for security reasons, I don't want to show the location of the vehicle since this is a very rare vehicle. Uh, it's got the little level of the battery here. It lets you know the voltage of the battery, and it gives you the signal of the actual unit inside. Okay. And we don't have a picture selective here because when the designer, the, when they designed this app, they didn't, they didn't have a picture of the vehicle that you can select, like modern cars. So we gave them one with the car cover on. That's a collectible car that you'll have, probably have the car cover on. Uh, panic button if you want to fire the alarm off you can hold the button down like this and I'll fire off the alarm okay uh, LED light it does come with an LED light we put the LED light on the bottom of the bottom of the dash because we you know this type of dash is all metal so we don't want to drill into the car or anything that will lose the value okay if somebody opens the door or bang on the vehicle the alarm will fire off that the alarm is going off. Gives you all the like a little sign. Okay. Uh, we also give them the flashing lights and when you earn the alarm it flashes the parking lights around the vehicle. If I give you a rundown on the what the car looks like inside for those who are collectibles. Yeah this is probably a pretty clean car for uh, 300 years so it's not bad. Alright and then this car, for those who don't know, the motor's in the back. See that? For 1966, to have a motor in the back, that's pretty impressive. I thought, uh, I think Ferrari and a few other cars. In Porsche. Porsche, Ferrari, VW Bug. Uh, you know, the Americans try to incorporate a rear-end motor. What it looks like, it's got a new compressor. The electrical could have been a little cleaner. You know, he just got the vehicle, but I would have dressed it up with loom, clean it up, and he's a lot of love. But other than that, it's a nice little toy. It's convertible. You don't see too many of them. Look, somebody stole the motor. Not just kidding. In this car, the motor's in the back. But look at it. This is what they call the trunk. I guess your spare tire goes there. Yep. It's just, uh, a little uh, brake cylinder, brake cylinder, and that's a hell of a windshield wiper fluid bottle. Yeah. The blower fan for the AC. Yeah. I'll tell you what, though, for being a 1966 in this car, uh, having an AC unit, that's pretty impressive. That works. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Windshield wiper motors. Yeah. You, know, you can tell that the engineering was up in those days. It's just perfect. Well, they, don't, they don't do it like they do it today. Yeah. Yeah, they perfection it a lot more uh, throughout the years. But uh, this is what the front looks like. So, there you go.